Hello my friends, welcome back to Keto and the Chaos. My name is Tammy and on this channel I like to share all my tips and tricks on how I lost 200 pounds without surgery and how you can be successful on your own weight loss journey. So if that's what you're looking for, don't forget to subscribe. Ring the bell for more videos like this one to inspire you to get started. All right, I'm gonna wait for a few minutes. I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. It's so funny, like when I set up the, the camera, like it has, more space than what I actually see on a live chat so then I have to fix it again but as you come in don't forget to say hello so that I can say hi to you I would like to I like doing that I'm sorry I'm a couple of minutes late um, Jasper distracted me he came in here just before I was getting ready to start asking for help finding things and doing things you know four-year-olds gotta love them can't believe I am 45 years old and still have a four-year-old but hey, that's where I'm at. All right, welcome. Guyne is here. Hello, Donna Hatch. Wendy Barron, you actually made it. I'm so impressed. Mama does keto. She's awesome. You guys should check out her channel. All right, nobody else saying hi? Come on, I see you here. Don't forget to say hi. Oh, there's, a, there's someone else. Oh, Rosalba Zuniga Escalante. I haven't seen you in a while. I love saying your name. It's awesome. <laughs> it's such a good name. Sorry I'm so wiggly. Why is it wiggling today? I promise you we are not having earthquakes. But for some reason, my camera is extra not stable. Probably because I'm with it. Yeah. Trying to see the comments. I try really hard not to Anyway, Patricia Romero is here. Linda Kelly is here. Cole J. Styles, hello. Pauline Cooper's Cats is here. Patty Montero is here. Thank you. She says I look awesome today. Um, I actually didn't. I didn't have time to wash my hair, so I just left it in a pony. <laughs> I look like a five-year-old when I have a ponytail, but thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> and Debbie Craig from Florida, welcome. All right, you guys. Okay, so. I I thought that I had made a video specifically entitled the keto cut and I went back through my stuff and I realized I didn't really have one that specified what it was and I've been getting a lot of questions about what exactly is it and even though I've explained what I'm doing at the beginning of most of my food videos since June I think people aren't quite getting what it is that I'm trying to accomplish and so I thought it would be a good idea since I had a suggestion from Nitro Wife. She is a new subscriber to my channel and she's trying to figure out how to do it. And so she thought it would be nice if I had a playlist that gave instructions on how to do the keto cut and then my results. So that is why I am making this live chat. I am doing a keto cut basics video for you guys to explain what I'm doing in detail and then I will add it to a playlist and put in all of my results from this um, cut that I've been doing. I'm now into week 11 of my keto cut. So um, where am I going to start? First place I'm going to start is with my getting started guide. A lot of times I mention the getting started guide at the very end of my videos and I don't think people are realizing that I have this available. So if you are trying to get started on what I am doing, I do have a very easy to understand guide available and you can get it two different ways. The first way you can get it is by joining my Facebook group. That is the most beneficial way because I'm there and my moderators are there and all the people that I'm coaching are there and, and you guys, we're, we have a community there where we're asking questions and on a daily basis I can help clarify things and I have a getting started guide in the announcement section pinned up at the top for you to get going on it that lays out everything you need to do to get started. The second way you can get it is if you don't have Facebook, you can send me an email to ketochaos at gmail.com. I try really hard to answer every email. and. You know, I don't always, if I miss you, if you haven't heard from me in 24 hours, message me again because I'm very quick when I see the email and if I forget it and it goes past 24 hours, I probably won't get it done. So if you haven't seen an email from me and you've been waiting for one, please remind me again. And that is the way you can get the Getting Started Guide. And the basics of how to do this are in there and along with a chart that'll tell you like how much to eat of each thing. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the keto cut basics now and give you the lowdown on how you can get started um, and how what it actually is 
explain exactly what I'm doing. So first of all, if you're really, really new at this, what is keto? Like what is the purpose of being a keto or what is a keto diet? A lot of people think that keto is just like a diet where you eat all the butter and the bacon and the eggs and you just shovel in fats and that's, and that's healthy and good and it's, um, it, it's a pretty common misconception that we don't eat anything healthy, that we just eat lots of fatty food and people don't really equate fatty food with health because of the years of being told that low fat was the way to go, right? It's, it's really just a misconception. Um, keto basically means when you withdraw sugars from your diet, starches from your diet, and starve your body of glycogen so that it is forced to find another fuel source. And that other fuel source is by converting fats into ketones and running your body off of ketones. So that is basically why it's called keto. Do you need oodles of dietary fat in order to achieve ketosis? No. The only thing that guarantees you ketosis is withdrawing the carbohydrates. So any diet that is low carb, low carbohydrate, regardless of how much dietary fat you consume, is considered keto. Atkins is keto. Hate to, I hate to burst your guys' bubble, but that's actually what I do. So I don't like calling it Atkins because Atkins has been vilified. Why was Atkins vilified? Well, for two reasons. Number one, when people were on Atkins, they felt crappy. They were, had low energy, they had headaches, they had all these problems, they had muscle cramping, they were miserable, right? Because at, when Atkins first started, when Atkins first started, sorry, there's a fly attacking me. Um, uh, I'm so distracted. When Atkins first started, they didn't really understand electrolytes and the part that it played in a, in a low carb diet, okay? So now that we all understand that, we don't have to worry about that part. And the second reason was, is everybody always gained the weight back because at the beginning, Dr. Atkins suggested putting carbohydrates back in the diet and most people just aren't capable of doing that well and they end up regaining the weight. I was one of those people. I didn't do Atkins, but I lost weight with keto, not knowing it was keto and then put it back on when I tried to reintroduce carbs into my diet. Gained back all that I had lost plus 40 more pounds. So it was 150 pound regain. So that was not fun. And that happened to a lot of people who did Atkins. So that's the reason why Atkins has been vilified. So if you're wondering if what I'm doing is Atkins, yes. And in fact, oh, I should have grabbed the book. It's over here somewhere. Oh, there it is. I grabbed, I showed it last week, but I hope I won't knock you over. Oh, oh upside down. There we go. New Atkins for a new you. This is the book that Dr. Finney co-wrote with Dr. Westman and Dr. Volick. Dr. Westman has a channel. Dr. Finney has a channel, Verta Health channel. Um, they have lots of sciencey information if you want to watch their channels. They also have a website, www.vertahealth.com. That is Dr. Finney's. I don't know what for sure Dr. Westman's is, but it's probably Adapt Your Life, something like that, because that's his YouTube. Okay, so those are the scientists behind this whole thing that I got all my info from. I'm just a lady. I'm not a nutritionist, not a scientist. I have nine kids. I'm a mom. My brain cells are killed. Why are you listening to me? Okay, well, anyway. Because <laughs> I was able to read and understand and put it into practice and look at me now, right? 200 pounds down. So keto is a state of ketosis. That is all it is. And a cut is basically keeping your calories at a deficit in order to allow keto to burn fat from the body, right? So when most people think of keto, they think of lots of dietary fat, lots of yummy fat. I mean, oh my gosh, who doesn't love dietary fat? Who doesn't love heavy cream, guys, right? Mm, me. So a lot of people think of keto that way, but it doesn't have to be that way. And when I'm talking about a keto cut, I'm talking about limiting my dietary fat in order to promote weight loss fast weight loss, safe weight loss, okay? I'm not talking about a fad or crash diet. I am not talking about an egg fast or a beef and butter fast or a water fast or an extended fast or any of these other crazy things. I'm not even talking about an extreme protein sparing modified fast. Though Dr. Westman does say that this version of keto is technically a PSMF it isn't the extreme low fat um, PSMF that is popular now, that's made popular by, oh, I forgot his name, who wrote the book. 
Why do I always forget that guy's name? Uh, well, anyway, it's not that. It's not a crash diet or fad. This is a safe way to lose weight. Is it low calorie? Yes. And that's why we call it a cut. And when I'm saying cut, what I'm saying is I'm cutting the fat from my body. And it differentiates the difference between eating a regular nutritional ketosis diet for maintenance, which is higher, higher in calories and to help you maintain your weight and just stay in one spot. I won't ever be a carbohydrate um, consumer, runner. I will not run my body on glycogen ever again. I am not capable of controlling that. I'm a carbohydrate addict, binge eater. I, I just can't do that. I have to be realistic, but I can eat a lot more food and maintain my weight. So once I decide I'm done with this cut, I will be going into that and on a new journey to figure that out. And it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. I'm about ready to be done, but I'm, I'm not gonna probably hit my true goal weight this time. I like to, to only do it for a certain amount of time and then go back to trying to do maintenance because I really wanna get a handle on maintenance. Okay, so how do you determine how to get started on a keto cut? Okay, the first thing that you have to do is monitor your protein levels. A lot of times on keto, people tell you to be afraid of protein and keep your proteins really, really low so that you don't have gluconeogenesis. Is that what it's called again? Gluconeogenesis, is that how you pronounce it? Um, that will kick you out of ketosis. Okay, first of all, it doesn't really matter to the degree that they're talking about. If you get kicked out of ketosis, it takes a heck of a lot of protein for that to even happen. And a lot of times the reason why your ketones go down when you're on a higher protein diet is because you're using up your ketones and you don't have a lot of extra ones floating around. Okay. So it's not because you got kicked out of ketosis. Gluconeogenesis is always happening when you're on keto. You can't stop it from happening because your body needs a certain amount of glycogen to run the brain and processes that it needs. And so it's always converting some of your fat into Glucose, isn't it brilliant that it can do that? Right, like it's genius, our bodies are genius. So how about we just like trust that, that it will happen. You can't force yourself into more gluconeogenesis by eating more protein. You're not gonna do anything bad to yourself unless you're gonna eat, consume a disgusting amount of protein, you don't need to worry about it, okay? Most people can't even eat that much protein. Like, it's a lot. Um, Dr. Finney recommends a point 1.2 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of lean body mass. Personally, I choose to do what Keto Gains recommends, and Keto Gains recommends 1 gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. So for me, I have now currently about 115 pounds of lean body mass. So I need minimum 1 gram of protein per pound, which is 115 grams of protein per day. I often hit about a 130. It seems to be my happy spot. Between 120 and 140 is where I try and hit while I'm doing my cut. There's a couple of reasons that you wanna keep your protein levels nice and high when you're doing a cut. The first one is that when your body is dumping fat, it worries. And sometimes you'll lose some of your lean mass, your muscles. You don't wanna lose your muscles. You wanna make sure when you're staying in a deficit that you're protecting your muscles as much as you possibly can. Will you lose some lean mass? I'm proof that you will. I actually did an experiment last summer where I did this cut and I did a DEXA scan before and after and I did lose five pounds of lean mass. Maybe not just muscle, but five pounds of lean mass um, last summer. So obviously you can't entirely protect it, but imagine how much lean mass I would have lost if I had um, not kept my protein level to preserve it, right? So that's why it's very important, especially if you are older, if you are over 60, it's imperative, vital, that your protein levels are higher. Dr. Finney says it's even more dangerous for people who are dieting when they are older um, for them to actually risk their lean mass. Now, why don't you wanna lose your lean mass? Well, guys, because the more muscle you have, the more calories you burn, right? So if you're losing that, you're actually decreasing your metabolism. 
you need to be careful, protect your metabolism while you're doing this. It's one reason I don't recommend any extended fasting because Dr. Finney says there are studies that have proved that extended fasting can literally permanently damage, permanently damage your metabolism. So I don't recommend any kind of fasting that's more than a one meal a day, so more than 24 hours. Um, Cause that's what Dr. Finney says and so that's what I, that's what I've chosen to do. I've never done a super crazy fast. I have only done what I am teaching right here. This is the only thing I've done. From day one, I have done this. So even when I was 374 pounds, this is literally the exact thing I have done since day one, okay? So I didn't change anything um, as I was going along. Really, not much at all. Like, I will talk about that just in a second, but the protein level is very important. So if you don't know your lean mass, you need to find out. So. You can just come and use my chart, and, and that's based, oh, I'm sorry, that is based on an average, okay? That's based on an average person of your height and sex. So if you want a starting place, my chart is a really good place to start, okay? It doesn't mean that it's perfect and it's not always, it's not exactly custom for you. If you want custom for you, you need to know your protein number, and that means you need to find out your body fat percentage and how much of your body is actually lean mass, okay? So the best way to do that, there's a couple, okay, there's a few ways to do that. The best way to do that, obviously, is to get a DEXA scan. If you can find one in your area, it's D-E-X-A. I have lots of videos on my channel. Just type in DEXA Keto Chaos and you'll find it. Um, you can see the process and like what they tell you. That's probably the most accurate you're gonna find for knowing what your lean body mass is. The second way you can do it is you can use a scale that gives you that. Um, I find my scale is really, really close to the DEXA scan numbers. Um, I got my scale off of Amazon and I have an affiliate link in most of my video descriptions. It's called Renpho, R-E-N-P-H-O. And it's, there was the one I bought was like 20, 25 bucks. It's not expensive. So I, you can use that to determine also your lean mass. And then a third way, you can Google the Navy body fat calculator and use your body measurements. And it's actually pretty accurate. I've compared all three and they're actually all pretty close, close enough to determine your grams of protein, okay? Once you have your grams of protein, you're pretty much golden. If you multiply your grams of protein by four, that's your calories for the protein that you're gonna consume. Another great reason to keep your protein levels high is another really good perk. Uh, your, protein your protein that you're actually digesting takes more calories to digest, right? literally burns more calories while you're eating. I'll take that. And um, it keeps you fuller. And so you're able to keep those calories much lower because you feel satiated and full. And especially for people like me who are binge eater, who really feel like they need that full, full, full feeling, protein is the key for that, for fixing that for me and making it possible for me to keep my calories low. Okay, so protein is the key. We call it Protein Prioritize Keto. Um, there is a Facebook group that I'm a part of also called Protein Prioritize Dirty Keto, where they basically don't worry about the ingredients in a product. They focus solely on the macros and the protein levels. And so they also give a really good, like more custom, but you do need to know your body fat percentage to get macros from them. So like mine is more like average, theirs is more custom. You can also do custom macros from ketogains.com if you go to their um, uh, calculator make sure you do sedentary like no exercise or anything because you want to be able to get the best cutting macros that you can you want all your exercise to count to burn body fat right okay so the second one the second one is your fats so the fats number we determined for our chart on keto chaos Basically, we took the calories from the 20 grams of carbs. We're only doing 20 grams of carbs in order to starve our bodies, right, of glycogen and force it to burn ketones, okay? So we have our 20, and then we have we multiply that by, that by four, and we have our protein level, and we multiply that by four, and then that's our calories for those two macros. Then we basically decided on about, I think it was like a 500 calorie deficit. It's not, it's, 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 I don't know, it's pretty extreme, I guess, if you really look at it. But you can decide where you want your deficit to be if you want to figure this out yourself. That's how we did this. It's not like super hard. It's, it's just basic math. We can, we can do this. Fats have nine calories per gram. So you decide how many calories you want to hit. 
Me, I prefer to be between 1200 and 1300 calories, and that's about 66 grams of fat. So I try really hard to stick between 50 and 80 grams of fat per day, but when I'm really, really wanting to cut body fat, I keep it between 50 and 70, and often like on the low end of 60. 66 tends to be my hover zone, where I feel okay, I don't feel starving, but it's low enough that it's cutting my body fat, okay? If you guys haven't seen my slideshow from this summer, go watch that and then come back and go, oh yeah, she knows what she's talking about. It works, guys, it really, really works. Is it dangerous because it's super low calorie? Some people who are very short and have really low lean body mass, their calorie level is gonna be like under a thousand. Is that super dangerous? I know you guys are gonna hate me. It is not super dangerous. And here's the reason why. Your body needs 75% body or fat, 75% fat to run. We all know that if we've done keto, that's the keto mantra, right? 70, I think it's 75, yeah. 75% fat, 20% protein, 5% carbs is what they say, right? That's what they say. Okay, so we need that fat to run. We need the calories to run. We need those calories. So we eat them, right? What if we don't eat them? Where are they coming from? When you're in ketosis and you're fat adapted, especially four weeks in when you get really fat adapted and you feel good and you're satiated, you're running off of body fat. You're not starving. You're not starving. It's not starvation, okay? So you are, you're definitely putting your body in a little bit stress zone. It definitely doesn't love it and sometimes it will complain. I'll tell you what, sometimes my body complains, but you are literally forcing it to access what it already has access to. You're not starving yourself completely because you have body fat. If you don't have body fat, don't be doing this. Like, duh. If you have no body fat, why are you here? Bye. <laughs> okay, we all have body fat. I don't know, how, I don't know anyone that doesn't have some body fat, okay? And the reason your ketones is low is because your body will convert your body fat to ketones, but it only converts the amount it needs. So when you consume excess dietary fat, it's converting to ketones because it has no choice. It has to deal with that body, I mean, that dietary fat that you're consuming. So you have a lot of ketones and you'll be like in ketosis via testing. When you're doing it this way, your ketone levels are gonna be super uber low. Like my average is 0.2. It's very, very low if I test. So I just don't even bother testing. I know that if I'm eating less, less than 20 net carbs, I'm in ketosis. I don't need to think about that. I don't need to worry about that. And my body will make the ketones it needs from my body fat. And that, my friends, is the cut part. So it's the lower fat and being in ketosis that is the key. Those two things are what melts the body fat fast in a safe way because you're eating enough protein to preserve your lean mass while you're doing this. You're not starving your body of the proteins it needs, the amino acids it needs to build muscle and repair muscle as you're doing this. So that, that's why it works so well. So those are the basics. For you, it's gonna be different for every person. Everybody keeps asking me, what macros are you using? Well, my average macros are 120 protein, 50 to 80 grams of fat, and 21 or fewer net carbs. Do I sometimes go over a little bit on my carbs? Yeah, yesterday I hit 23 net, oh darn. Like it's not set in stone. And I do 50 to 80 now because now that I am smaller, it takes a lot more calorie restriction in order for me to be able to cut body fat at this point. When I first began, I, I tell you what, I ate that whole 80 grams of protein, I mean 80 grams of fat every day. And I still lost gangbuster pounds. Like, 19 pounds the first month, 15 pounds the second month, 15 pounds the, the third month, 12 pounds the fourth month. I think, I don't know, I, got, I hit 100 pounds lost by eight months. After that, I was about, uh, down to about eight to 10 pounds a month. And then after I hit like 138 pounds loss, I think I went down to six or seven pounds a month. And then I kind of went in and out of doing maintenance and stuff for the rest of the time. Since I've been doing this um, cut, so like I'm, one, no, I'm 172.8, and when I started, I started at 193 point something. Do the math, guys. It's like 23 pounds, I think, um, in 11 weeks, 10 weeks. So, obviously, I'm doing pretty dang well this summer on using the cut, because at this point, 
I don't have a lot of body fat and my body doesn't want to let it go. So I kind of have to nudge it a little bit more by putting my fats a little lower. But that is the only thing I've changed this entire time. I've basically decreased, I decreased by 10 last summer in order to get to that 200 pounds loss and this summer I dec decreased by another, what, four more grams of fat. It's amazing how just one gram of fat lower <laughs> will do something crazy to you and help you lose it. So that is the basics of the keto cut. I hope this helped you guys. I hope you can come to Facebook and get your macros from me or go to Keto Gains or join Protein Prioritize Dirty Keto and have Brian Hanna do it. He's amazing. He's way more knowledgeable than me. And if you ask him a question, he will write you a book back. He's pretty awesome. Um, the main thing also when you're doing this is to also focus on your electrolytes. If you haven't watched my basically getting, getting started on, I think it's Beginner's Guide to Keto, it talks about carbs first, electrolytes second. Because second, electrolytes are very important. I've done so many videos on them. If you search Keto Chaos Electrolytes, you'll see all my old funny ones. Oh my gosh, you guys, I look so different. It's weird. Uh, I go back, I, this morning I actually went back and watched the video I made called macros that talked about this back then I didn't call it a cut and I think that's the big thing it's like I'm doing the same thing I think people think I'm doing something different than I've been doing in the past but I'm not it's the same same thing I'm just calling it a cut to differentiate it between maintenance and when I'm trying to lose weight that's the only difference I'm literally just trying to cut body fat so I'm using weight loss macros the same ones I've always used from the beginning but I went back and watched that video and I'm talking about the group who shall not be named, ketogenic dieters that ended up kicking me out of the group. But that, they are the ones who told me about Dr. Finney, and that's where I learned everything. So you got to give them credit for that. I, I, I'm ever grateful to them for that. But yeah, I'm watching myself, and I'm just like, wow, I have really changed a lot. I mean, I got braces. I lost so much weight. I just look like a whole different person. People keep telling me I'm glowing. Guys, I'm not glowing. I have makeup on. It's called highlighter. <laughs> and good lighting. Oh, I, I, I should really show this on every video. See, it's the light. That is a $20 ring flashlight that might be in the affiliates, affiliates link. I don't know, I might've put that in there. Anyway, so questions. Who has questions? That's all the info, if you're here for the info, that's all there is. I don't know what else to talk about. Um, that's the basics of it. I'm going to put this at the beginning of the playlist and then I'll put all of my weeks of results and my food videos maybe in the summer keto cup playlist for people that are looking for that. I know Nitro Wife, I appreciate the suggestion. She was worried to give me suggestions, but I love when you guys give me ideas for videos because guys, I've been doing this for three years, YouTube, three years as of this week. It's my three year anniversary on YouTube weird oh my gosh I can't believe I'm still doing this weird and I have talked about everything so many times I literally feel like I don't have anything to say that's new and so if anyone gives me ideas on new videos I could do for the live chat because I love chatting with you guys um I'm grateful so thank you Nitro Wife for the suggestion and now I'm going to open it up to questions so I'm going to scroll back up to the top See if anybody else came after I started talking. I'm sorry, I'm wiggling it so much. It's very wiggly today. I'm sorry. All right, so I think we got to Debbie Craig. So Natalie Blackwell, hi. If you're still here, guys. Stacey Hall, Flowers Wonder Girl Sabrina is here. I'm so glad you're here. I hope this helped you. Um, Ray LJ and, oh, I said it right the last time. Wouter Rosema, I think that's right. <laughs> And she said, uh, he, he says, I'm using antipsychotics and still losing weight. Thanks for the tips. Last time, greets from the Netherlands. Nice. I'm so glad. That's so good to hear. I'm so glad. Yeah, definitely don't go off your meds. <laughs> that makes me very happy. Okay. Morel. Oh my gosh. I can't say that. It's French. Morel Cowet. Who? I think that's right. Hi from Newfoundland, Canada. Newfoundland. Newfoundland, I even said that wrong, sorry. I think that's right. Nancy A, hello from California. Um, Pauline says she couldn't get the book New Atkins for New You in Spain, but I'm assuming it's called New Atkins, New You over here, which is what I bought. Yeah, hopefully, 
Um, if not, like, I mean, it's real, honestly, the book isn't necessary. The Art and Science of Low Carbohydrate Living is his other book, and it is so sciencey. I tried doing a book club on it, and we didn't even make it through because it's just so much. So much. He has studies and, oh, about the sodium, about protein levels and everything. So if you really love science and you want to know all of the info, the art and science of low carbohydrate living, which is, I think, over there. I don't have it right here. Dang. I should have grabbed these before I start, but it's over by my computer. That one has the nitty gritty. This one's more like the how to put it in play. But basically what I just gave you is all the info you need to do it. You don't really need to read the book. I mean, if you're a reader, you can read my getting started guide, start there. And if you really want more info, you can get in the book. But honestly, yeah, it's not, you can do it without reading the book. I never read the book before I did this. I read, I got the book later. <laughs> in fact, to be honest, I haven't read the whole thing. I really should, but I haven't read the whole thing. I, I, I skim read. All right, Sharon Cowan is here. Stacey Hall is here. Thank you. She says she loves my humor. I don't feel like I am have a sense of humor very much, so that makes me happy. Uh, Leanne Cantu is here from Texas. Welcome. Glad you're here. I've seen you comment before, but she says this is her first live. That's awesome. Gladys Guerra. Guerra? 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 I think that's right. From New Jersey. Chugalug Dog is here. Good to see you. He always asks how to donate. I don't know why. Why do you ask that, Chugalug Dog? How can you donate? There's a little dollar sign right there. You can give me a little super chat if you want. Or go to PayPal or join my Patreon, or buy a Teespring shirt. There you go. He always asks that. I think he just likes to ask that. I don't know. I never usually answer. <laughs> All right, Tammy McDonald, April Bailey, Kathy Sherman. Oh, hi, Kathy. I haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you. Tree of Life Mama. Hey, Celestia. I know her in real life. Haven't seen you here. That's awesome. Silva Star, welcome. Boss Lady Denise, hey. Terry Lee, hello. So many people joined after I stopped saying hello. I should have waited a minute. And Amin from Africa, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. What part of Africa are you from if you are still here? I'd love to know. Um, I have friends. I have many friends from Africa, actually. Um, mostly the Maasai, Maasai Mara from Kenya. They're pretty awesome. <laughs> Great group of warriors. Love those boys. And their wives, of course. They're beautiful wives. And kids. <laughs> um, let's see. Silva Star says, sipping on some keto aid at the moment. Gotta get my sodium. Good job. I'm so proud. Kesara Sarah is here. Welcome. I'm so glad. April Wooten. Nice. She says it's her two year keto anniversary today. She's working on her goal, but she'll always be keto. Yep, that's me too. I am on my three years, eight months anniversary, on my YouTube anniversary. I think my YouTube anniversary was like four days ago. I think I started on April 8th, I mean August 8th. I think so. Hey Tammy, Keto Cricket is here. Welcome, Patricia Diaz, welcome. Linda Kelly, she says, thank you for all the info. I've been struggling doing keto but not losing. I think your info will help. I'm clearly doing something wrong. Glad I found you. Yeah, the key is being in ketosis and having calorie deficit, so really, a, Really um, check that out. Oh, and I didn't really talk about tracking, did I? Dang, I meant to. I have it on here. Um, I use chronometer to track. You can also use carb manager. I don't recommend my fitness pal because it tends to be really inaccurate because a lot of user entries. If you're gonna use any other programs, like make sure any of them, try and find the USDA entries because they'll give you your potassium numbers and it'll be it should be correct. You want to make sure you know your potassium numbers so you know, number one, that you're hitting that base level potassium um, of, well, I say, I used to say 1,000, but now I really try and hit 2,000 minimum. But you don't really want to exceed 4,700, including what you eat. So if you're doing a supplement, you really need to monitor that. I am doing a supplement, so I have to watch it really close. So I use the USDA um, and trace it as much as I can. You do need to track on an app. You can get it on your phone. You can get it on the computer. Chronometer has a PC version and you, you can get it on there. I think the PC version costs money though. I'm not 100% sure about that. I know you could ask Sarah Pearls of Wisdom and Keto because she uses the PC version. Um, but there's tons of ways to track and it doesn't have to be 
perfectly exact. It just needs to be really, really close, right? And so that's the way you're going to track your food and keep yourself um, on track. There's lots of other tips and tricks, but it's not necessarily part of the keto cut, but tracking is definitely part of it. Okay, Silvastar says, I wanted to ask a question. When you're in a cut and having good weight loss, do you ever have pains around your midsection, almost like stitch pit plane? pains at random places um no i would say that's probably a potassium issue i do get i get chest pain and it's usually a potassium issue i literally feel like my chest is squeezing which right now with covid and everything is probably not the best feeling in the world i get really bad anxiety feelings and that's often a potassium problem. It means I let my sodium get too low and I dumped my potassium, and so I have to rebuild it. So double check your potassium levels. That might be your issue. Any kind of muscle cramping um, is usually a potassium issue. It can be a magnesium issue. If you're not doing glyconate, you might like to switch to glyconate instead because it's, it's muscle relaxer kind of. Um, but I do sometimes feel like, like my body, <sighs> It's hard to explain. Like I'm so hungry and yet it's not a hungry feeling. Like my body is being sucked dry because it legit is. When I'm starting to feel like that, which I did feel yesterday, I have to examine. First of all, is that electrolytes? I always say sodium first, sodium first with every problem. It's almost always. But you're mentioning that you're taking your sodium, so you probably, it isn't your issue, but it could be you just need more. Um, I always do sodium first and then of course the other electrolytes. And then if those I know are in check, I, I examine my mental state. So my mental state was not awesome yesterday, so I figure that was probably part of it. Um, my depression was pretty, pretty bad yesterday and my anxiety levels were high, so it was probably a lot to do with that, that I was having issues with hunger. Um, but sometimes I'm just literally, my body is like, you have gone too long without, without dietary fat. You need to eat some. And I finally, I feel like, I don't know how to explain it. I'm being sucked dry. So maybe we're talking about the same thing. It's not like a stitch in my side. I just really feel... <laughs> it's the only way to describe it. So, and I did feel that yesterday. And so I'm debating having a refeed. So sometimes I will do, when I'm on a cut, I will have a high or fat day, give my body a little bit of a break from burning body fat by consuming a large amount of dietary fat, which tends to be about the same as my protein level, so 120 fat. Also, if I get stuck, like for a really long time, sometimes I'll do that to try and jog my metabolism a little bit. Um, that's, that really seems to help. So I try to pay really close attention to how I'm feeling, and if I go a few days feeling that weird, being sucked dry feeling that I hate so much, I will add a little bit of dietary fat for a day and see if that helps. So that may be also your issue if you've been on a cut for a long time. Like, bodies don't love it. And I know that Keto Cricket has been teaching me and talking to me about um, reverse dieting. So that is actually going to be my next project. I am going to try that. I've got it all planned out how I'm going to do it. And I'll be doing videos on that as well. And so I think I will do a live chat like this and start a playlist like Nitro Wife suggests. Because that just makes so much sense. And I should have had that sooner. And then I'll put them all in a playlist there for the reverse dieting so you guys can keep an eye on how that's going. But basically reverse dieting means instead of just jumping right back into higher calories, you add a little bit and you kind of like ease your body into it so it doesn't just pack on the fat. So that's what I'm planning to do. Thanks Keto Cricket because she's awesome. You guys should check her out too. She has an awesome channel. Okay, let's see. And Amin says, I'm doing a five-day egg fast to kickstart my keto. Is there a better alternative? Yes. Don't do it. It's a waste of time. Um, okay, these are the reasons it's a waste of time. It will get you in ketosis quickly. If you're looking for a way to get into ketosis quickly, just removing carbs does that. You don't need to eat just eggs. Secondly, you're going to end up hating eggs. Thirdly, eggs are 50-50 protein-fat ratio. They also have carbs. So they are not ideal. I hate to break to you. They are not an ideal way to kickstart your weight loss. Does it work? Yeah, because you're going into ketosis and your body's dumping water weight, just like you, you go into ketosis using my macros. It's the same thing. 
Um, actually, it's not the same thing because your calorie deficit isn't going to be good if your protein level is high enough. You're not going to be able to get, you're, you're going to be doing a high fat day because if you do 120 pound, uh, 120, oh gosh, I can't talk, 120 grams of protein from eggs, you're going to get 120 grams of fat basically because it's practically 50-50. So that isn't helpful to get a calorie deficit. So that isn't gonna kickstart weight loss. Will it kickstart ketosis? Sure, any, any withdrawal of carbohydrates is gonna kickstart ketosis though, and you're gonna have a water weight drop no matter how you do it. If you do it with my macros, you're gonna be starting off on the right foot and losing actual body fat at the beginning. If you start with an egg fast, you may or may not, depending on how big you are. If you're very, very obese, you probably will lose body fat doing that. But it's not ideal. It's gonna make you hate eggs. And who wants to hate eggs? I have 38 chickens. I love eggs. I never wanna hate eggs. Any of those crazy fad fasts, do not do them. They are a waste of time. Beef and butter fast, are you kidding? That's even worse. Like it's, no, just don't. Just don't do it. No water fasting. Guys, macros, macros. Get the chart. Do the macros. I promise it's gonna work. That's the only, I, I don't suggest any other weirdness. Um, like I said, if you come into a place where you're stalled for six weeks and you've had no change in your weight loss on the scale, in your measurements on your body, in your pictures that you're taking of yourself, if you're not doing those things, you should be at least once a week. You have to have more than one tool to measure your success. The scale is not reliable. We all know this. If you've watched my channel long enough, you definitely know this. Um, the scale is not reliable. So six weeks with no change at all in any of those. Then lower your fat macro or have a high fat day if your macro is already low and try and kickstart your metabolism. Those are the main suggestions that work to get you out of a stall. If you're really thick, thick, thick in a stall and you're not going anywhere, you know, maybe you just really need a long time of higher calorie to give your body a break because you just pushed it a little too far maybe. Um, that seems to have worked for me. I took nine months off. I did put on 20 pounds, but I took that back off really quickly and I'm way thinner now than I was when I was this weight last year. That's the weird thing, right? I am the same exact weight on the scale, but measurements, I have gone way down, way further down than I was. So, ah, something about that, that's awesome. Anyway, I hope that helped. Um, Stop doing the egg fast. Start doing my macros right now, today. That's your answer. Okay. Um, AZ Married says, just or Arizona Married? I hope so. Just ordered the book, having trouble getting back on keto, so looking forward to the higher protein way. Is it easier to kind of stay with set foods? For me, it is. Um, I eat the same thing in the morning almost every single day just because I don't have to think about it. I've already tracked it, so I don't have to track it before I eat it. I know exactly how much to make, and so I just go make it, and that's why I just kind of get set in the zone. Every once in a while, I'll want something else, but I'll tend to use the same ingredients to make something else. Um, for dinner, I have about eight to 10 meals I rotate through. I have the supplies for all of it. I know the macros that, mit, that meet my macros for all of it, and so I don't always have to track it perfectly either. And so I, I do that. I like basically have them written all down, all my meals and how much, you know, like if you don't want to track, the best way to do it is have all your meals written down um, and have them be exactly half your macros and eat two of them a day. So yes, it is a lot easier if you, if you like, like me, to stay and do the same things over and over. It is a lot easier to do it that way. Um, Melissa Doles from Nebraska is new here. Hi, it's good to see you. All right, I'm so, so glad you're having success. Boucher, that's awesome. That makes me so happy. And you guys, names are so hard. Alaj Nibaya from Jerusalem. That is a beautiful name and I probably slaughtered it. Carol, I'll try and remember. Carol, I can say Carol. <laughs> That's awesome. I have other friends in Jerusalem. There's a photographer there named Ricky who I was really good friends with about 10 years ago and I just miss her. She's awesome. You probably, maybe you know her. She lives there. I don't know. Um, someone sent me a super chat, so I am going to get down. Oh, Christine, you're so sweet. Thank you. 
She says, I continue to struggle to get the weight off. I've been stuck at 165 for a few months. The lowest I've seen is 159. Giving myself some grace because I had back surgery on July 30th. Yeah, I don't know if you need to do like reverse dieting and get up to a higher calorie level, um, like add in 50 calories a week or so. Like there's a lot of different ways if you, if you Google it, like there's a billion different ways to do reverse dieting. Maybe try and get your calories up a little bit so that you can take a break without gaining weight and then try losing again. Because like I said, the break for me really seemed to do the trick. Taking some time off really seemed to reset everything. And so now my metabolism's kind of back to normal and it's like handling this cut a lot better. That's the only thing that's new that I think I maybe could try and offer to you, Christine. But you're so sweet. Thank you for the super chat. You are the best. Appreciate it so, so much. All right, where was I? Let's see. Uh, Keto Cricket says the chronometer on the computer is free too. So that's great. Um, Wendy Barron says I use carb manager, but I'm terrible at tracking. Yeah, no worries. You know what? Like we, we only can do what we, what we can do. Tracking sometimes stresses people out. So that's why I suggest writing down your meals and getting the basic macros of what meets half your macros. And then you don't have to track it because you know if you eat two of those a day, you've exactly met your macros. So you don't have to think about it hard. And that really works for a lot of people, especially people who have um, issues with tracking causing them to have, you know, actual eating disorders. Like if, if tracking causes you to have an eating disorder problem, you should definitely just write down the mac the macros or the the weights for the chicken and the whatever that you're going to eat and rotate through meals that's the best way to do that and to avoid the tracker altogether and you'll have success that way too because you already pre-tracked them all and got it out of the way and then you don't have to think about that tracking anymore you just think about the food which you know it's very satisfying food so yeah um leanne says sorry at work trying to listen are we supposed to cut calories down to what um, the calories are based on your lean mass, really. Like, um, my calories for my, I'm five foot seven, and my calories are be under 1300. They're between 1250 and 1300 is where I usually hit. I very rarely go lower than that. I could go lower than that if I wanted, but I don't choose to. Um, it's really tricky. I don't know that I go as low as 800 calories, so you're saying, is there a too low? Um, Technically, when it comes to being fat adapted, there's not necessarily a too low because you're burning your body fat for fuel. You're not starving your body. But you're probably not going to last that long eating only 800. You're going to be miserable. And you know what? If it's not satiating, it's not possible to do for the long term, right? Like the first time I did this, I did it for a year and a half straight. And then I took a little break and then I went, I've been back and forth basically since then for the last two years. So I would say it depends. It depends on your lean body mass. So like I said, you, you find out your lean body mass and that number is your protein number that you need to hit. If you're going to exceed a number, exceed your protein. If you're starving and you don't want to raise your fats, eat something that's very lean, okay? to raise your proteins up even more if you if you need to eat more food. Keep your body fat between 50 and your number that you want for your calories. So like my tippy top calories um, is about 78 grams of fat and I try and keep it towards the low end but I don't ever get below 60 because I just can't get there without feeling starving. So it's just really like a little lever. You decide if you're higher for less weight loss lower for but don't go below 50 grams because your body really needs a certain amount of dietary fat to run itself well can it run lower than that yes yes it can lyle lyle is the guy lyle somebody the dang psmf um he talks about it but you have to supplement fish oils and you have to have refeed days and all this stuff to do that so i don't recommend going below 50 just stay above 50 and you're golden um, find that sweet spot where you're losing really nicely, but you don't feel miserable, but keep those proteins up. Don't ever go to bed without hitting your protein ever, 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 ever. Even if that means you're eating a third meal at midnight. That's what I say about that. Um, do I make a daily keto aid? Um, he, he's drinking um, a keto aid with lemon juice, salt, low salt, magnesium citrate to keep my electrolytes up. How much salt? 
you need more guaranteed um no i drink sole water and i shoot it straight i take a couple grams of no salt with a tiny bit of water and mio and i shoot it um I don't make keto aid anymore. I used to. You just need to make sure your sodium levels are high enough. You need 5,000 milligrams minimum of sodium. I take 8,000 milligrams a day or more. That's my minimum. I don't feel good unless I'm having 8,000. You may be different. And if you have high blood pressure issues and you're sodium sensitive, you should stick to the two to 3,000 range of sodium and then bump your potassium up to the higher range of 4,700 by eating more potassium filled foods, um, meats, have potassium, everything has potassium, but meats have a lot and so do, so do, do greens. Um, so bump those up, make sure you track them, track your electrolytes, make sure you're getting enough. And yeah, I hope that helps. You can also use no salt, potassium citrate. Um, I myself prefer to avoid citrates, magnesium citrate and potassium citrate, mostly because in the magnesium advocacy group, it says that if you that citrates can interfere with celluloplasmin, and I don't even know what that means, but it's something to do with iron absorption. So I try to avoid them. I don't know if it's real. I'm not a scientist. I don't understand half the stuff I read. I just try. So I take magnesium glyconate. A lot of take, people take um, Oroate in the morning or Malate in the morning. Uh, malate gives you energy and glyconate relaxes your muscles. I personally just take glyconate only. And um, I take, like I said, a, a couple grams of no salt a day. And because I just don't eat enough veggies, I just don't eat enough to get my potassium levels high, especially when I'm doing a cut. And I take my sole water, which is 1400 milligrams per tablespoon. I have a video how to make that and you will laugh because it's hilarious and I look funny, but it's there. If you Google Sole water, I'm usually like the fourth or fifth one down, and Sole, S-O-L-E, if you're looking to make that. So, long answer to a very short question. Uh, Carmen Fringer says, I, decide, I decided I'm not fond of August anymore. Downright torture sitting here surrounded by trees ripe with peaches, rhubarb, and strawberries. I'm practically drooling on myself. Um, you know what? If you really need it, you can track one slice of peach and eat it. The problem with it, as long as you keep it under 20 net carbs, you can eat any fruit, a tiny piece of it, right? The problem is that often it's very difficult to eat only one. So I like cherries and I didn't have any cherries this year when they were out. I mean, I think maybe they're still out, but I didn't have any this year, but usually I'll have like nine cherries um, to satiate my desire for summer fruit that I love. Uh, so you could do that with a peach. I think rhubarb is probably doable if you sweeten it with something that is zero carb. You should look at the calorie, I mean, at the carb level of rhubarb and just see. It's possible. And strawberries are definitely doable. Just track them. I do sometimes strawberries and stevia sweetened whipped cream when I'm wanting a nice dessert. It's really good. So don't completely deprive yourself. If you're feeling miserable about something, let yourself have a taste. It's not the end of the world. Just make sure it's a choice. You track it and move to the next day. If it, if it gets you uh, cravings or binges, don't do it. So if you can do it safely, it's fine to do it. Um, let's see. You look great. Do you have a set goal weight or will you see how you feel as you're doing a cut? I don't really have a set goal weight, but I think when I hit 163 that I will be a body fat percentage that I want. I really want 27% body fat I got that number from the DEXA scan place because that is their determination of a person who is fit. Uh, I think I'm currently at 33% body fat, but I haven't had a DEXA scan in a while. That's going off the Renfo, and I don't know that the Renfo scale is exactly accurate, but it's pretty close to what the um, DEXA scan said. And so I think if I hit 163, I will be there. But I honestly don't know for sure. Um, but 163 is like my mind thing. I don't think that I will hit that before I finish this cut. Um, at this point, I'm already, I'm on the edge of not loving it at this point. When I get to the edge of not loving it, then I realize that it's probably time to be done for a minute and take a little bit of a break. This time though, like I said, I'm going to be doing the reverse dieting. So I might still lose a little bit more as I'm pushing the calories up because it'll be probably two months before I hit my, uh, 
probably maintenance level of about 1600 calories. It'll take me a couple months because I'm gonna do 50, I'm gonna do 50 calories um, per week is how I'm gonna do it. And I'm planning to start that in September. So I technically have three more weigh-ins before the end of August. I think it's three more because there were five, I think there were five weekends in August this time. So I'm gonna go to 13 weeks cut and then I'm gonna go into the first week of my reverse diet, which I have never done. This will be fun. I'm excited. I'm excited to try something different and see how I can see if I can do it. So I'm gonna be adding on calories. So my goal is by the end of September to be able to eat a quest bar again. That's literally my goal. I love them. I don't know what's wrong with me. I hated them at first, but I want a quest bar. And I could fit a quest bar in my macros, and I've thought about it. But I also had an action goal of not doing a lot of bars in the summer, so I'm kind of leaning towards not doing it. But if you see one, you'll know why. It's because I finally decided I was fitting it in my macros because I really wanted one. And you know what? That's okay. So, yeah, anyway, that's my weight loss. Are my chickens just for eggs or do I eat the chickens as well? That is a very good question. I hate killing my chickens, but I have done it. I have eaten my chickens, yes. I have like five chickens in the freezer and I keep buying chicken from the store because I don't want to eat them. So yes and no. Mostly it's because the ones that we put in the freezer were like seven years old and they're like tough as nails. So like they taste delicious and the broth that they make is oh, divine. Like it tastes better than any chicken broth I've ever tasted. But the meat itself is very chewy. It has a nice flavor, but it's very chewy. I have a hard time offing my chickens when they're younger. Um, so I guess technically they're just for eggs and food storage in case we're desperate. But we do when they get older and they stop laying. Um, we do call them because, you know, to keep rotating through. And so this fall, when my babies start laying, I have a whole bunch of babies that I added this year. When the babies start really getting good at laying and I don't need those old ladies anymore, I might call the rest of my older ones. I hate doing it. My husband hates doing it. We hate it. Like, it, it's really gross work. But, yes, we do do it. We do do it. We are true chickeners. It's hard, though, when you raise them up from baby babies because you love them, right? They're kind of pets, too. So, yeah. But we have done it, and we do do it. There you go. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> And Emmy says, thank you. Definitely starting to hate eggs. Yep. <laughs> um, Sabrina says, watching this cut has been so different than your last one for sure. Uh, yeah, I had a hard time with it last summer. I was really hungry and I was annoyed. I didn't want to do it. I wanted to be done doing it. And then I took such a nice long break that it was easier to do it this time. And because I'm having so much, so much success, my depression has been really good because you know, even when I've had the weight gains, my depression has really stayed level this summer and I've been able to be a little bit more perky. That's the hardest thing about YouTube is if anything really hard happens, it's hard to be like perky on YouTube and be like, hey, everybody, when you feel like crap. And, you know, I don't want to, I'm very reliable too. Like, I don't want to like not do a video because I'm feeling terrible sometimes I will skip a live chat if I'm feeling bad though because it's just not worth it for me to sit here and talk to you guys for an hour if I'm depressed because I'll just say things I probably regret and yeah I'm surprised I'm not depressed today actually but I'm doing great this morning I'm feeling very very good so that's a good thing all right uh, Kathy McGuess says, I eat the same breakfast every day, and for some reason I never get sick of it. Eggs and turkey rashers. I have no idea what a turkey rasher is. you got to tell me, because I want to I wanna see if I want to try it. All right, let's see. Okay. Uh, Keto Cricket says, fat impacts hormones, so if your libido plummets, my libido's always been sucky, so that's hard to tell, or your hair falls out, which I think also can be affected just by losing body fat because it puts hormones into your body. But I haven't lost any hair this summer. This is my same regrowth from last time. I haven't lost any. Um, 
then you want to raise those days up. Slower weight loss is much healthier, but may not be as encouraging as losing fast. Also, if your hair falls out, it's from what you did three months ago, so it's really hard to judge based on that. So I might not lose my hair from this cut until next month. So we'll see. It's possible. All right. Hey, Nitro Wife is here. I talked about you a lot. This was your, this was your vision. Thank you for the idea. Awesome. Um, I have an intolerance to greens. Will this still work for me or fix my stomach issues with them? Um, I don't know if it'll fix your stomach issues. It might, but you don't have to eat any vegetables. Take a multivitamin. You literally have no reason to eat them. Ketosis will keep you... Well, okay. So ketosis forms the same kind of something acid. Oh, my gosh. Butyrate, something or other that uh, gut fiber creates. Is that it? Go to vertahealth.com and search for fiber and read the article. Because I suck at explaining stuff I don't understand. But something to do with that, that Dr. Finney is finding research that says basically you do not need fiber in order to have a healthy gut when you're in ketosis. Also, if you keep your sodium levels good and your magnesium levels good, you will have normal bowel movements. The one thing I have noticed about bowel movements on this version of keto, when you don't eat a lot of bulky vegetables and things, is that your stools are very soft and you don't go very often. Like I go like every three to four days and it's basically like non-existent. I think it's because there's very little waste. Your body uses all of it up and there's no fiber, so there's nothing to push through. But I go just fine and that's what it is. So don't think you're constipated unless you're bowel movements look, you know, hard and rocky, then you've got an electrolytes issue, which we've talked about before, but in keto, you don't have to just take a, take a multivitamin for your micronutrients and call it good. I eat very little vegetables. You'll notice I eat about a cup of vegetables a day and that's it. I'm just not a veggie person and that's okay. <laughs> I have been criticized on that many times, but it's true. You don't eat it. Okay, let's see. Nitro Wife said, question, I just switched my macros to how you do them higher protein, lower fat. Before I did normal standard keto, I would readjust my macros every 10 pounds lost. Um, I talked about that earlier, if you, did, if you missed it. You do not need to change your macros unless you're six weeks without any change in weight loss on the scale, m measuring your inches and pictures. If you haven't had no change in six weeks, then you want to lower your fat grams by 10 and see if that helps kick you. So, yeah, you don't need to adjust them. I'm literally using the same ones that I used, the same protein level I've used the whole time and the same macros that I've used the whole time. I just have gone down from about 78 to 83 fat to mostly about 66. And that has been working. So, so no adjusting. Um, Sabrina says, hide and seek suggested more chicken content. My sister and I miss the chickens. Don't worry, the chickens are in and out. <laughs> the chickens are in and out. Um, there wasn't as much chickening when I had other things to film, but when I have nothing to film, the chickens are back. Trust me. <sighs> I don't know what to say about the chickens. They just lay eggs and I pick them up and then they go broody and I put them in the broody box and that's pretty much the rotation I go through. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Um, she's like, if you already answered, just don't ignore it. No, I just asked, I just answered you. All right, I think I'm done. Thank you so much, Nitro Wife, for the suggestion and for being here. I appreciate suggestions on video ideas because like I said, I've talked about everything so much. I don't even know what people want to hear anymore. This is going to be the beginning of the playlist of my Keto Cut for 2020. I will be putting them all in a playlist in order. So if you really just want to binge watch all of the videos from this summer, I will basically put in all of my weigh-ins and all of the food videos just boom, 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 boom right after this one. So if you're watching this video and you made it to the end and you're ready for that, it's coming up next. And we'll talk to you all again soon. Bye.